Okay, so um, today we're going to go over 2.3, which is called chopping logs. It's, you're going to be able to use the graphs to discover properties of logs and then justify conjectures about logarithms. If you don't know what a conjecture is, simply put, it's like you're making observations and you're like, hey, I think it might mean this. I think all logs have this, right? Maybe you're watching a bunch of like little um, kids at a playground and you notice, oh man, they're all short. And you'd say something like, man, little kids are short. That's a conjecture. You can't prove it yet, right? Um, another conjecture would be something like, man, little kids are loud when they're having fun. These are all conjectures, okay? So you're making observations and you're, the wrong word is guess, right? A guess is like a complete shot in the dark. Hey, Ms. Johnson, what's your favorite color? I'm gonna guess it right now. You have no background on me and my favorite color. So it's a complete guess, right? Very, very good. Okay, so it says, can the graphs of log um, functions give us insight into some of the algebraic properties of logs? Can the graphs gives a, give us understanding of properties of logs? So we're gonna listen to Abe and Mary talk about a couple of things. So Abe and Mary are working on their math homework together when Abe has a brilliant idea. I was looking at this log function that we graphed in falling off a log, the last activity, log base two of X plus B. And I started to think that maybe I can just distribute the log so I can get log base two of X plus log base two of B. So like, I wonder if we could do that. Okay, that's what Abe is saying. This is this is a conjecture. He's like, I wonder if I could do this. So it says, I guess I'm saying that I think these law these are equivalent expressions. So I could write it this way: log base two of x plus b equals to log base two of x plus log base two of b. Mary says, uh, I don't know about that. Logs are tricky, and I don't think that you're really doing the same thing here as when you distribute a number right? So I like how Mary is describing this because she's saying log base two is not a number. In your head, if you think that log base two is a number, that's like saying plus is a number. Times is a number. Plus and times are what we call operations. So what do you think? How could you verify this work? So a bunch of you put answers. Let's see, a bunch of you put answers um to test his idea i'm going to use log base two of x plus one where x is one and see if these are equivalent because the expressions don't equal abe is incorrect fantastic right here this is fantastic work right here um what do you think abe's idea works give some example or oh, no, that's nothing i don't think they're the same i believe Abe may be wrong um i don't think they're the same so <clears throat> So one of the ways that you're checking, this person checks is just by plugging in a value. This is a very concrete thing. So to prove something works, remember, it's a longer process than proving something that doesn't work, right? So very good. This one says, Abe, no, wait, let me read it over here because it's like super tiny. Um, I just know that there's something going on with these logs. I just graph log base two of 4x, and here it is log base two of four X, log base two of four X, right? It's weird because I think that this graph is just a translation of log base two X. Is it possible that the equation of this graph could be written in more than one way? And how would you answer his question? So can you rewrite log base two of four X? So that's his question, right? That's his question. And some of you, let's see. I was reading through these earlier. Nah. Some of you actually used um, one of the things here on the on your test, right? Um, so here goes. Um, how would you answer this question? Are there conditions that need to allow the same thing? So this is what they're basically asking. Could you rewrite log base two of four X um, and I don't have to put parentheses here, but I'm going to because then it's more clear to everybody that this is what I'm taking the log of. And they want to know that it's just a translation, right? It's a translation. So a translation means that it's going to be 
um, shifted either to the left or to the right or up or down. So you're saying, wait, Ms. Johnson, you want me to rewrite this? Yeah, and th that's what they're trying to figure out. So um, anyone have any ideas on how to do this? Log base two of four X, anybody have any ideas? I actually saw this in the, in the quiz. No? Okay. So are there any conditions that could allow the same graph to have the same exact equations? So first of all, we already proved that that doesn't work, right? But there is something that could be similar that does work. So, hey, can you guys tell me, is there another way to rewrite 4x? Is there another way to rewrite 4x? And then I also want you to think back, okay, hey, by the way, we're in log land. If this is confusing, what's my backup plan? If I'm in log land and I'm confused, what should I do? How could I rewrite it? Hint, hint. Kind of, but can you can you tell me um, if when we first started with logs, what was the thing that I always told you? If you're confused in log land, what should you write it in instead? If you're confused in log land, where should, how should you write it instead? Yeah, in exponents, right? Oh, okay, let me do that. So this is equal to some number y, okay? So then can you translate this into exponentials, please? Can you translate this so that I had its base and exponent? What's the base gonna be? Yeah, the base is gonna be two because the base is two, good. What's the exponent of this gonna be? What's the exponent of this gonna be? Yeah, so the, no, actually, sorry. <clears throat> What's the exponent right here going to be? Oh, okay, wait, let's back up for just a second. Give me a second. So if I write log base B of X equals to Y, and I want to translate this into exponentials, so then, if you have log base b of x to the y, of x equals to y, this is not catching up to me. So this is log base b of x equals to y. What's the base of this gonna be? What's the base of this? Right here, guys. What's the base of this going to be? Good. It's B, right? Okay. So then, so this is going to be B to the what? No, it's not to the X. Yeah, it's not to the X. It's the other guy, right? So log, like, right? Like, if you think about log base two of, I don't know, four, it's saying, this is saying two to the what gives me four. Two to the what gives me four. That's what this thing is saying. So B to the what, what am I gonna put up here? B to the, what am I gonna put up here? Yes, Y, right? So B to the Y equals to what? B to the Y equals to what? Yes, equals to X. Okay, same thought over here. 
two to the what's going to go right here? What's the exponent right here? Two to the what? For this example. Oh, two to the y. Very good. Thank you for participating. Awesome work. Okay, two to the y is equal to what? Two to the y is equal to what? Nope. Yes, 4x. Very good. Two to the y equals 4x. Right? Two to the y equals to 4x. Oh, okay, Miss Johnson. You guys okay with this so far? Yeah? Okay. So wait. Man, it'd be really cool to just like ignore this X for a second because I know what Y would be, right? If you could just ignore, like put your finger over this X, pretend he's not there. You know what two to the Y equals to four is, right? So I'm just going to pretend that this guy doesn't, he's there, he's there, but he's not there right now. I'm just, I don't know what to do with him right now. So what is two to the Y equals to just four? What would that be? Yeah, right? Two to the y equals to four, what would that be? So here, this is in my brain, right? I know two to the two equals to four, right? I know that. Do you guys all see this? <clears throat> I know that two squared equals to four. I know that. It's this x business that I don't know what to do with. Okay, so Ms. Johnson, can I rewrite it like this? two squared x. Can I rewrite it like that? Two squared x. Yeah, you can write that because it's still four and it's still x. <clears throat> right? So I know what part of this answer of y is going to be. I know part of it, but I just don't know the rest of it. Anybody have any ideas on what I could do with this? Anybody have any ideas that I could do? Because I, I know part of this, right? Give me a second real quick. Okay. So it has to, it must be something with this business. And I don't know what, I, I don't know what it is. Say, I actually do know what it is, but I'm just trying to get you guys all to think about it. So. I wish there was a way to like figure this out. So it's all going to be based on this equation right here, <clears throat> this graph right here, right? What I want to do is try to figure out what we could do to figure out what that equation would be. So my best guess is going over here and doing, oops, let's not erase all of it, um, right? Because this is 4x. Let me get rid of this minus 5 business. All right, so here, here is this equation here, and they want us to figure out what we could do in order to fill this out. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna find out where my normal point went. Where's my normal point? You know that one zero that we always talk about? <clears throat> Where'd he go? Does anybody see him here? Look at your graph really carefully. Do you see your point one zero? See this point that we normally use right here as a reference point, this one zero guy? Where is he in this picture? So, oh, someone said one, two. Oh, he, wait, is that right? Let's see. Oh, it's right. He's right there. He's at one, two. So where did he move to? Where does he normally live? At one, zero. And where did he move to? At one, two. Oh, wait, let me like kind of document this really quick. So my normal point <clears throat> lives right here at one zero. And then you're saying he moved up. How many did he move up? He moved up to, oh, up to. Wait, we know how to write an equation that moves up to. How do we write an equation that moves up to? How do we write this equation that moved up to? 
Oh, two plus in front. Oh, okay. So you want me to write two plus, and they already told you it was log base two of X. Oh man, that's cool. Cause that's that two that was right there. See that two right there? See that two right there? I wonder if that's a coincidence. Huh, we'll see. Okay, if that's true, then I should be able to graph it here. Um, I'm just gonna copy this so that it makes my life a little easier. So um, first it's log base two X. And then they said go two plus. Oh, it is the same. Look, if I take them off, it's the same function. Do you guys all see that? Oh, so Abe was kind of right, but then kind of wrong, right? He said that we could do some kind of like, he said he wanted to do distributive property, but that's not true, right? You, you couldn't necessarily do it like this. And it kind of had to look like this, very good. So it could be rewritten as two plus log base two of X, very good. That actually lives on question four as well. So can you guys all write that down? Two plus log base two of X. But where did we get that from? Where does that two come from? Like, how does that work? So my next question is going to be, so we can write that down down here. Log base two X plus two, right? But like, how does that actually work? Where did that come from? Okay, so that's where I want your brain to be thinking right now. Where did that two, where does this two why is it here? Where is that two there? Because I see a four. If someone said move up four, that'd be cool because I'd be like, oh, it's just that number right there, but it's not. So we got to figure out where that two comes from. Make sense? All right. Moving right along. Uh, let's see. Number five. It says, I wonder um, here, I wonder why the vertical shift turned out to be up two when X was multiplied by four. I wonder if it has something to do with the power that the base is raised to since this is a log function. Let's try it with log base two of eight X and log base two of 16 X. So really quickly, any ideas on what these two sh would shift up by? What would these two shift up by according to what you just learned? Log base two of eight. What would it be shifted up by? Now you can kind of see the graph here if you look really carefully, right? Look very carefully here and more big here maybe is what I need to do. If it's an eight here, right? If it's an eight here, where'd that point move to? Look, look very carefully. Look very carefully. Where did that point move to? So normally it lives right here, right? Normally it lives right here at one zero. How much did it move up? That's my question right there. How much did it move up? Look careful. Some of you put the wrong answer. Who cares? Put it, put the right answer down. Yeah, it moved up three, up three. Oh, up three. So here, I'm gonna make a little note to myself, try to write the log in equivalent form for the shift. This one moved up three, Ms. Johnson. So up three. Wait, so you're saying for log base two of four X, and I'll write this on this side so you guys can all see. So log base two of four X, log base two of four X, I'll make this a tad tinier. Um, log base two of four X was up two. Log base two of eight X is up three. What, where, like, how do I, mm, what tells me that that's three? That's what your brain should be saying. Where, where do you see three here? I don't see a three, unless you do see a three. Tell me where you see a three. So this isn't plus two, this is now plus three because that's what you guys said, move it up three, Miss Johnson, right? So this is equal to log base two, oops, I should put it in that one front. Right? Yeah, it's because two to the power of three equals eight. That is exactly why. Right. And this is because, and let me put this here. 
Classmates words up here. Copy. Paste. Does that make sense? It's up three because two to the power of three equals eight. Does this make sense? So wait, wait, wait. So the reason why this is two was because two to the what gives me four. Oh, it's two, right? Okay, if that really, really does make sense, check out this one. What would, okay, don't even look here. Don't look at the point. Don't look at the point. Don't look at the point. But what would the shift up be now for this one? For 16x, what would that shift now be? Okay, so what would my equation be then? You said it's my shift would be up four. So this is up four. Right? So what would my equation be? Exactly four plus log base two of X, right? And then we check it with our calculator, but we're not even gonna go there, okay? Let's move on. It says, oh my gosh, I think I know what happened here. Here's what we see from the graph. Log base two of four X equals to two plus log base two of X. Log base two of eight X is three plus log base two of X. And log base two of 16 X is equal to four plus log base two of X. Very good. Then it says, here's the brilliant part. We know that log base two of four is two and log base two of eight is three and log base two of 16 and is four. So here's how they're rewriting it. Now stop and just wait, what? Oh, I see. Now blow this up just a tad, Ms. Johnson. Okay. So what they're saying here is this, and this is something that you already knew. Two is the same as log base two of four. Three is the same as log base two of eight. And four is the same as the log base two of 16. So they just kind of replaced it. Do you see what's happening here? From here to here. Do you guys all see what happened from here to here? You guys all see these? Okay, if that's true, then this should make sense. Okay, if that's true, then this is, should make sense. So how would you write this in words? Log base two of A times B is equal to log base two of A plus log base two of B. How would you write this in words here? Let's see what you guys wrote. Um, very good, kind of. Not yet, huh? Okay. When I see what, this, when you're thinking about how do you write a rule, it's when I see what, then this is what I do, right? When I see a stop sign, it means that I have to push on my brakes to stop the car, right? When I see uh, my phone ringing, I check who it is and then I'll answer it, right? So what? Ha this is a rule, right? This is something that you need to put in the, in your toolbox, right? So how would you write this? How would you explain this to someone? What would you say? No? Okay. For me, this makes sense. Now, let me take you back to the land of exponentials, okay? So this is saying when I'm multiplying. Oh, so let me think of a case when I multiply. Let's do like x cubed times x to the fifth. x cubed times x to the fifth. Do you guys all remember this? What's your answer? In fact, don't tell me my answer. What do I do to get my answer? equals to x to the what? No, no, no. This is like uh, back in eighth grade. And all they want you to do is simplify this. Yeah, you just add exponents. 
So this is to the three plus five. So I want you to think that you already know these rules because you know what happens in the land of exponents. What? Yeah. So when I'm multiplying, when I'm multiplying, what do we do? We add, which makes sense because this represents the exponent, right? This represents the exponent. So I know that's hard to see, but think about this. When I'm multiplying and the bases are the same. So when I'm multiplying, isn't that base the same? Cause it's a two. Yeah. Then you want me to just add my exponents. Yeah. This is adding your exponents. Does that make sense? The, these two things in my brain make so much sense. This is not a new rule. Oh my gosh, Michelle, this is a new rule that I have to memorize. No, it's not. I just translated it from exponential land to log land. Does that make sense? So what? how would you say something like this? I don't know, something like when I'm multiplying, when there's multiplication in the argument, I can separate it by adding the, the log base two or the logs into addition, something like that. Okay, so let's continue. Um, number seven says, is the statement true? Yep, it's true and we just found it, right? So then continuing on, um, Mary says, so I wonder what would happen if similar things if you have division inside the argument. Okay, okay, okay. So remember, if you take, can you take yourself back to exponential land? What did you do when you had division? Say x to the seventh divided by x squared. What did you do to your exponents when you had x to the seventh divided by x squared? What did you do with your exponents? Do you guys remember this? Yeah, you subtract, right? X to the seven minus two. I actually am writing it as seven minus two, not as five, because I want to make you guys remember that this is subtraction, right? So what do you think would happen here? What do you think would happen here? So take your time, take your time to write this, but give me your best, like, this is what I think this is equal to, Ms. Johnson. Equals to what? Nice. Nice. I got someone saying log base two of X minus log base two of four, right? That's what you said to do, Ms. Johnson. You told me to subtract them, you're right. And in fact, you already know what log base two of four is, right? This is just the big number two. This is a two, right? So this is just a vertical shift down to, I don't know, let's check. So here's my normal point. He's right there at one zero. Look, he moved down two. He moved down two floors. You guys all see that? Got this? All right, I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna pause it and I want you to try this one on your own. Try B on your own. All right, so for this one here in the chat, I saw several correct answers. Um, someone said, hey, Ms. Johnson, I know that this is log base two of X minus log base two of eight, which then someone said, but Ms. Johnson, this is just three. So they, I, I don't know, I just put a big O three right here because it's easier for me to just write three, which then this tells me this is shift down three, right? shift down three. So this point, our normal point one comma zero right here, if you look, boom, 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 he shifted down three. He moved three floors down. So I want you to be comfortable in both um, both of these rules. When it's multiplication, Ms. Johnson, I add exponents. Exactly, right? 
when it's division, Ms. Johnson, like these down here, I subtract. And then you're able to deal with these, you know, these obscure kind of like eight, like log base two of X over eight. You should be seeing this now as, oh, because I'm in log land, that's a neg, that's a shift, right? Okay, use these examples, my apologies here. So use these examples to write a rule for division inside the argument of a log that is like the rule of that Mary wrote. So what you're trying to do now is you're trying to come up with a like rule like this, except for now you're doing division. So can you do that for me? Log base B of, uh, let's see, let's just go A over, oh, they used two there. Here, let me use two here too, um, of B. What would that equal to? So if you had log base two of A over B, log base two of A over B, what would your, what would your um, rule look like? Like kind of like this, but what would your rule look like now? So that's what they're asking for here in this one. Let's see if I got some good examples. Oh, someone said, Ms. Johnson, I think it's A minus B. There's an example. Yeah. Is this right? Do you guys think that this is right? Log base two of A minus log base two of B. Is this right? Do you think this is right? Look at what you guys wrote up here. Does that make sense? Uh oh, I got quiet in the chat. Writing rules is hard, yeah? It's okay if you're wrong. Who cares? I'm going to correct it before your test anyway. What do you guys think? Do you think um, Abraham Nemeth is correct? Log base two of A over B equals to log base two of A minus log base two of B. Yeah, someone says, yeah, Ms. Johnson. Oh, okay, so you want me to write this here. Log base two of A minus log base two of B. Now, now check this out. According to what we talked about all the way up here, when I divide, I subtract my exponents as long as the bases are the same, okay? So I'm gonna say that the same way here. When I divide, as long as the bases are the same, then I subtract my exponents. You guys all see that? Same, very good, very strong work there. Um, is this statement true? I'm gonna tell you right now, it is true. Here's um, Abraham gave us an example. Um, Abe says, you're brilliant um, for thinking of that multiplication rule, but I'm a genius because I've never used your multiplication rule. And I came up with a power rule. Power, power, -ha. just kidding. It's not that kind of power. It's like this kind of power. Let's say, let's say you start with log base two of X cubed. Really, that's the same thing as having log, log base two of X times, 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 right? So I'm always gonna encourage you to do this. Okay, go back to your definition. What does X cubed mean? X times X times X. But Ms. Johnson, you already told us the rule for X times X times X. Oh, I did. We add the exponents. Okay, log base two of X plus log base two of X plus log base two of X. And then, hey, like pretend I have John in a class, another John in class, and another John in class. What would you all say? Man, Ms. Johnson, we have three Johns in class. You're right. Or if you want, I have a puppy and another puppy and another puppy. And what would we say? Oh, I have three puppies, right? Same thing. Okay, so my rule is log base two of X cubed is equal to three log base two of X. Now, some of you are like, Ms. Johnson, wait, where in the world does that come from? Okay, so can I, can, wait, wait, first of all, do you think that's true? I don't really think it's a power rule unless it works for any power. You should only show that it works for three, good grief. I'm going to say it works for any number. Does that work? Do you think this works? And so someone says, yeah, it works. So can I just remind you of something really quick? What happened when you took something to a power? Like what happened when you took X squared 
and you took it to the fourth. What happened when you took X squared and you took it to the fourth? What did you do with your exponents? What did you do with your exponents? These two guys here. What did you do with these two exponents right here? Uh-oh, did, did I lose you? So what did we do with our exponents over here? X squared to the fourth, what happened? X squared to the fourth. Yeah, we multiplied them, right? Don't you remember this? Two times four. So Ms. Johnson, are you saying that because I remember my exponent rules, it's going to help me know my log rules? Yes. Right? Because this says right here, do you guys all see my little power guy right here? He's all, he's all powerful, my little power K, right? If you notice, there's an invisible multiplication sign right here. You guys all see that? So when I take something to the power, I multiply. Yes, I multiply. Does that make sense? Okay, last little piece here. Uh, before we win the Nobel Prize for math, I suppose we need to think about whether or not these rules work for any base. Um, and so the question was, do you think it works for any base? And this should go somewhere on your notebook take a snap of this, make sure you have this. It's also right here um, and make sure that you get this. So I'm gonna say these rules together. These are product rules. Product means when I multiply. So when I multiply, I add, yes, right? That makes sense. Um, a long time ago, you learned that addition and multiplications were buddies. In fact, multiplication was repeated addition. I'll also remind you that in exponent land, when you're multiplying and the bases are the same, you add your exponents, right? Same thing goes here. Dividing and the bases are the same, we subtract our exponents. Last but not least, if we have a power, it turns out to be multiplication, okay? All right, that made sense, I hope. <laughs>